Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where, well, you guys send me stuff and, well, I open it live on camera here. Live. Here we go. Um, we've got a big one, local this time, from an Australian. It comes from Cindy Baker. Um, is this a girl? Perhaps? Um, I don't know. I don't want to presume. But uh, thank you very much, Cindy. It comes from uh, Beresford. And, um, yeah, it's in a PlayStation 3 box. But, uh, huh, not quite sure it's a PlayStation 3. If it is, it's in pieces. And I'm not sure what I would do with it. But anyway, here we go. Let's open it, crack it open and see what we get. Most likely the box has just been renewed. It's heavy, it weighs about six kilos. So, uh, could be anything. Oh, um, no. It, is it a PlayStation? I don't know, I don't have a PlayStation. It looks like some sort of video game. It is a PlayStation 3. Ta-da! What? Why has Cindy sent me a PlayStation 3, I wonder? I've got no idea. Um, there's no note inside. Oh, thank you very much, Cindy. I presume it is broken. But I've never uh, used... Well, it, lo it looks... I don't know. Oh, here we go. It's some sort of... Uh, uh, the gamer uh, nerds will be uh, screaming at me because I don't know what this sort of uh, stuff is. I've never used a PlayStation 3. I'm more of an Xbox uh, kind of guy. But damn, that's heavy. And it sits on some sort of dock, which is some um, power wave. It looks like it's got some... No, fans. There we go. I don't know what that does, but uh, it's a power wave. It's like, it, it's obviously not a standard. It's just some sort of third uh, party aftermarket thing. But we have ourselves a PlayStation 3. Presumably, it doesn't work. And Cindy wants me to fix it. But... Uh, well, I don't know. There's no note inside. If you're going to send me stuff, at least include a note. Wow, check out the HDMI and the Ethernet connector on the back. They have seen better days. Look at that. Ah, oh, corroded to the hilt. And the correct technical term for that is crusty. Now, I can only presume that it's not working and Cindy wants me to do a teardown of it, but I'm not quite sure um, why... Uh, because there's, like, there's got to be, I haven't looked, but there's got to be, surely, a million PlayStation 3 teardowns on YouTube. All the uh, gamer nerds have surely torn this thing down. Anyway, let's power it up, and uh, I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to go beep, 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 beep. Ooh, we've got a red lead there. What does that mean? Nope, nothing. I assume that's a touch uh, switch. Once again, yeah, sorry, I've never actually used a PlayStation 3. And uh, people are going, well, you never played a PlayStation 3. No, I've... Hey, green. Yellow. Green, yellow, and then flashing red. Anyone know what that means? I'm going to have to Google that up. Maybe it's a, um, a classic fault. I don't know. Well, I had a very quick Google, and uh, this uh, three beeps and flashing red lead um, seems to be, according to one report, some sort of overheat uh, issue. Something like that. I don't know. Some people say they get it when it's ejected or something. I don't know. I'm sure I'll have a whole bunch of people uh, tell me different in the comments. So I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Uh, Cindy, uh, please let me know um, what I'm supposed to do. If you want me to do a uh, teardown, like I said, there's probably a million of them already on YouTube. So I don't think there's much value to be gained there. Fixing it, Eh, I don't know, there's probably a hundred million different web pages and videos devoted to that as well. So, thanks for sending that in, Cindy, but uh, I don't think uh, we're going to do anything with it on the mailbag here. Really, it'd take me uh, quite some time to do uh, any sort of extensive uh, teardown or repair. So, uh, please let me know, and uh, this one will go on the shelf for a future video. And I know there's a lot of people who don't like postcards, but I've got four of them here, and I won't read them out, uh, but rest assured I have read them. I'll just uh, quickly display them. Greetings from Bhutan. I am pretty sure we've never had anyone from Bhutan before. Thank you very much, Jared. Gerard, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I'm not even going to pronounce that one, but it's uh, Rumzit Labor. I'm sure I've got it wrong. Sorry. Absolutely hopeless. Looks like a hackerspace, complete with beer by the looks of it. Fantastic. And someone 
doing some work down there. So thank you very much, Felicitas, who's at Felicitas and at Partkeeper on Twitter. And it is a hacker space. There we go. And there's the address. Check them out in Germany. Hi to all my German viewers. And we have one from Rhodes in... Ta-da! Here it is. Um, he's Swedish, but it comes from Rhodes in Greece. Thank you very much, Didrik. Oh, very nice. And we have a three-dimensional postcard. Look at that. They're the Redwoods. Well, it's kind of, you know, it's embossed kind of thing. Very nice, the Redwoods. Fantastic. From Dave. Thank you very much, Dave. And we have a good old-fashioned letter here. That's where to send the stuff, by the way. From Paul in Doncaster in Victoria. So let's whip this one open, see what we've got in here. It's a little bit... Oh, could it, is it over the 5mm limit? Oh, I don't know. I don't think Australia Post gives a toss. But uh, let's have a look. We have a letter and we have some little, oh, little adapter boards. Nice. We have ourselves what looks like some pretty schmick op amps. The LME 4990.88. That's 0.88 nanovolts per roots hurt, hertz uh, noise. So awesomely low noise. And uh, they're little, oh, uh, yeah, SO to uh, dip adapter boards. They're always very handy. Thank you very much. But uh, yes. He's obviously, um, obviously about the uh, noise stuff that I've been dealing with in the uh, previous videos with the uh, DSA. And yep, there we go. Um, he was interested in the effort to upgrade the 35600A, which, uh, 660A, which I may need to do because my latest one, I don't think I'm going to be able to repair the sucker. Anyway, please find Attach 6 LME 4990 op amps. These chips have very low voltage noise, 0.88 nanovolts per root hertz. Absolutely incredible. Outperforming the uh, 797, which is, I think, one of the ones that I, um, you know, just sort of the jelly bean, well, not jelly bean, but sort of, the, you know, the industry standard uh, low noise uh, industry op amp while being a much less costly IC. Current noise is higher, so this op amp provides benefit for low source resistances only and SMD only packages, hence the adapters. Awesome. He's been gathering information on ultra low noise amplifiers, linear systems make a number of low noise uh, JFETs, analog devices, and that core produce lonely, um, costly low noise BJT matched arrays. Oh, very nice. And simple to see how you go modifying your DSA. Thank you very much, Paul. Awesome. So yes, I will get uh, back on to uh, possibly upgrading that uh, amp after I get done with the, um, hopefully, well, attempt a few more repair videos on the uh, uh, more upmarket uh, DSO, the uh, 35670A dynamic signal analyzer. But uh, yeah, there's no way my analyzer can actually uh, measure the performance of this sucker. But uh, this would certainly be um, the best choice if I was uh, most likely um, all things considered, the best choice for uh, upgrading the uh, front-end amplifier on that thing. Warning, Will Robinson, audiophile wank alert. LME 4990 Overture. Oh, yes, because it's going to sound fantastic. We're playing the William Tell Overture, ultra-low distortion, ultra-low noise operational amplifier. And uh, there's some of the applications. Oh, fantastic. Ultra-high quality audio signal processing, blah, blah, blah. Input uh, current... Noise density, a nominal, uh, banner spec on the front page, never believe it, of course. 0.9 nanovolts per root hertz, typical 1.3 nanovolts per root hertz maximum. And if we actually go into the curves here, it's actually not hugely better than the LM797, um, uh, uh, se yeah, 797. And if we have a look at the voltage noise density figure here, yeah, there's the uh, point, um, 0.88 nanovolts uh, per root hertz, typical, say, at the 1 kilohertz uh, figure there and it just starts to roll up the one on F noise of course and uh, there we go down at uh, one hertz there where it oh, you know one two almost three 2.8 say nanovolts per root hertz if we compare that with the AD797 it's actually uh, around about nominally uh, 0.9 nanovolts per root hertz, so basically the same. It's just a rounding error, uh, really. These uh, analog devices are a bit tight asses. They're only going down to uh, 10 hertz here on their uh, uh, graph. That's not very... Like, it's somebody's just drawn that with a pencil. That's not like a real plot. You know, this looks like a real plot that they've actually made. This looks like something someone's just drawn that in Photoshop or something. I don't know, in bloody paint. 
or something. Ah, crazy. Anyway, only goes down to 10 hertz, and it's like, you know, 1. Uh, say 8 uh, nanovolts per root hertz there at uh, 10 hertz. And, well, say at 10 hertz here, 1.5, you know, well, it's, it's, uh, they've got a logarithmic uh, scale here on the uh, vertical. So, yeah, I, you know, it, it's not a huge amount better, but it's actually worse in the current noise density here. If you check this out, it's normally 2.8 picoamps uh, per root hertz, and this one is down under 2. There you go, at uh, around about that 1 kilohertz figure where it starts to uh, ramp up. And uh, yeah, this one is a bit better, but it's actually uh, higher um, at the higher frequencies. So there you go, not at the higher bandwidth. Uh, sorry, so you know, not that great. Once again, specified at uh, plus minus uh, 30 volts only with a uh, center rail uh, common mode voltage there. So current noise density, I'm probably, I was going to do like a follow-up video to my previous noise video, but it didn't seem, uh, talking about the current noise density and going through some calculations and uh, stuff like that for a typical circuit, but it didn't seem very popular, that video. I, you know, eh, I thought it was, you know, quite good and um, yeah, it wasn't that popular, so I don't know whether or not I'll bother with a follow-up for that one, but uh, yeah, this one, I think the primary thing is there's probably not a huge amount of difference when you implement both of these chips in a practical uh, circuit, probably not a huge amount of difference between the two, you'd have to go into uh, finer details and probably do some real in-circuit performance measurements, but uh, as Paul said, I think this one is uh, significantly cheaper than the AD797, which, oh man, you gotta sell your right leg for. Next up is from Charlie Peccia. Thank you very much, Charlie. The name rings a bell. Has he sent someone something in before, perhaps? Anyway, he's from Uruguay. Whoa, we don't get too many from Uruguay. Check out the Uruguayan stamps. Very good. And he sent it to Sir David L. Jones. Call me Sir, goddammit. Name the movie. Anyway, let's have a look. Um, sorry, it is actually already open. Um, that's because uh, it looks like... Um, Australia Post uh, Customs have inspected these, so went, oh, dodgy, we're getting too many, you know, this sounds sus with sir on it, you know, that obviously uh, raised the red flags there, but uh, thank you very much, Charlie, let's have a look. Got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got a, oh, a calculator, Canon checkbook calculator. I'm not into checkbook calculators, but I am into scientific calculators. We'll pop that off. We'll just find a single uh, chip on board one. That'll probably be a PC based, based on the that form factor. It'll be a single uh, PCB chip on board, uh, blobbed, perhaps. Anyway, um, let's, hey, woohoo! It is a DeLorean! Fantastic! Thank you very much, Charlie. Sagan will love the DeLorean. Hot Wheels, we have a board. No idea what that is. What do we got here? We got infrared LED, photo transistor, by the looks of it, and we've got ourselves a, some sort of NEC part. No idea, some memory coupled to that, and another big NEC with York C on it. No idea. Uh, obviously a big LCD designed to go on there. Not sure what that, uh, that's probably a uh, keypad. So we've got LCD keypad. So, um, and a battery terminal. Some, some sort of handheld uh, PDA type thing going on here. I guess I should read the note, shouldn't I? And there we go. That's probably for the uh, um, internal uh, speaker. Although that's the height of that isn't nearly matched to that. Anyway, we've got a watch crystal there. And yeah, anyway, that'd be my guess is some sort of, uh, you know, um, early palm sort of uh, uh, PDA type device. Oh, here we go. Australian government, Australian Customers and Border Protection Service. We're very serious here, folks, about uh, inspecting things with Sir on the front of them. Oh, no items have been removed by Customers and Border Protection. Australia Post has blah, 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 opened it and put the rubber glove on, blah, 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 Sring the damn support center. Ugh, give me a break. The first day of October of the year 2013. Nobody starts their letters with that anymore. I like it. So many episodes, still have to watch. Love them. A weird calculator for your collection. Thank you very much. A toy for Sagan. He will love it. The guts. Oh, a HP 48SX. There you go. Ah, calculator. Should have known. Jeez. 
bit of a calculator and should have known that. Maybe it's nice to see te technology and construction quality. I think this one is from the latest batch because as far as I know, the processor does not correspond to the S line. The following, um, see, I didn't, you know, it's just got NEC on there. Um, they're fabbed the chips for uh, HP. Have they? So I wouldn't have guessed that's a 48SX. Um, I don't think I've ever t taken apart a 48SX uh, HP calculator before. And that doesn't... Oh, yeah, there it is. I missed it. There you go. HP. There you go. Should have got that. And there you go. Yes, it still used the old uh, Saturn um, architecture processor. So if uh, people haven't uh, seen the 4-bit uh, architecture uh, processor inside these, um, well, early to, you know, mid, uh, oh, and a fairly late model um, HP uh, process. I'm not sure if they're still using the Saturn, are they? I think they are in a couple of calcs. I personally have the GX model, which I still use, recently acquired the <clears throat> 15C, the original version. Awesome. Thank you very much, Charlie. Yeah, so there you go. NEC uh, have obviously uh, fabbed the uh, Saturn processor for, uh, well, a couple of uh, chips here for HP, and uh, that's inside a 48SX calculator. Absolute classic. And there's the old school HP logo, look at that. And then it became Agilent, although the HP calculator division stayed with HP because it was a computing device. And, well, Agilent's gone the way of the dodo now. We're going to end up with a new bloody logo. And, oh, God, it took me like 13 years to get used to the old one. Unbelievable. Now, I did mention this uh, checkbook calculator is probably uh, just a single board. With chip on board, I'm going to have to... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there it is. CR2032 battery. Don't know why it didn't work then. And, uh, yeah, it didn't work. Um, on. There you go. Got to press the on button. Duh. There you go. Eh, checkbook. I have no interest. Oh, sorry. Didn't zoom out. Checkbook. I have no interest in money and stuff like that. But there you go. Canon checkbook calculator. Could be a rare one. Who knows? I'd have to look it up. So uh, I don't want to destroy it. I do have a calculator collection, and we're going to have to flip this bloody thing open, take out all the screws, because, well, it's just got a ground plane on the back, and that's it. And no, I have no idea why they would put the crosses on the back of this thing. It, uh, so uh, the keys are all going to fall out. And... Oh, no, it's not a chip on board. There we go. Yeah, I've got... There you go. Um, yeah, quite even older than that. It's a uh, a, a squished uh, quad flat pack. One of those, um, you know, uh, lead, um, not the regular uh, J-lead uh, type, but just the uh, uh, ones coming straight out. I can't remember offhand uh, the name for that. But there you go. They've actually got that. Look, check it out. They've got... Some extra traces jumping across here, like jumper links. They've put them on there. They've got their double-sided board, but they haven't actually used it. Look at that. They've applied... You can see, if you get the correct angle of the light... Yeah, there we go. You can see that they've taped. They've, you know, adhesived that on as a separate step afterwards. Look at that. Jeez, you don't see that very often. Check out the soldering on those surface mount caps. That is crusty as unbelievable. And uh, and surrounding the chip there isn't any better. Look at those couple of uh, chip resistors and chip caps there. Oh, awful. We have ourselves a Japanese Epson LCD display there. And, well, yeah, there's not much else in it. Um, these things are always, you know, very simplistic. Custom uh, ASIC manufactured by NEC. But, uh, yeah, uh, that looks like a fiducial there. I don't need one, know why they need a bloody fiducial on this thing. I'm not even sure. <laughs> I mean, machine assembled my ass. You can really see that extra layer just stuck on top there. You can see that it's like a, like a taped uh, sort of film that they would have manually, uh, presumably someone would have manually pressed in place. I'm not sure of the exact uh, manufacturing process, but that would have been a uh, bare pad um, down there coming from this layer here. Look at all that just garbage. Look at all that crud on there. Ugh. Man, is that, is that like, so are they like, is that solder? I mean, that's, that's awful. Ugh. They're adhesive type uh, jump links. So if somebody knows the name for this old uh, uh, technology of the stick-on um, 
you know, tapes on top of the existing board. Obviously, they're relying on the solder mask underneath so it doesn't uh, short out. And you can see they've got a uh, test connector on the side of this board, which would have been used for production testing, no doubt. Well, they say they don't make them like they used to, and well, I'm glad. Uh. Hello, McFly. Next up is Mark Nias. Nias, however you pronounce it. Sorry, Mark. Um, he's he's a pom. He's from the UK, from Greater Manchester, to be precise. In there, and we have a T-shirt. I love T-shirts. All right, let's have a look. See what we get. It's a lucky dip. Ah. From Friendly Factories Organic Cotton. Or, oh, it's a Sun shirt! Yes! Oh, fantastic! Yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah, Mark, I think on the forum, um, went to, well, actually a whole bunch. Well, I don't know about a whole bunch, but, uh, you know, quite a few of the um, EV Log Art Forum guys went to an open day at the uh, CERN. They had a great time. Apparently, they all uh, met up there and had a whale of time. And they, uh, Mark said he'd get me a t shirt, and he did. Oh, Awesome and oh, postcard and that is a is that a one of those uh, 3D things? No, I don't think so. It's just nice and shiny. But look at that pawn, unbelievable. Who needs a religion when you got this? And it fits perfectly. What a brilliant T-shirt, Large Hadron Collider. Wish I could have been there. I'm so jealous. Oh, what is it like? Fifty bucks. Fly from the UK over there to uh, check it out. Bit more expensive here to get there from here. Oh, I wish I could have been there, guys. But thank you very much, Mark, for the T-shirt. Brilliant. And we have ourselves another pom. N Kingsley Lewis, thank you very much. N from uh, Norfolk in England, haven't been to Norfolk, and we've got ourselves an e-reader and no battery, something battery. Anyway, let's uh, check it out. Uh, and comes in a little pouch. Oh, look! Oh, right. E oh, there you go. E-reader. Whoa! Something happened to it. This is going to have to be a teardown, folks. Is there a letter in here? Let's have a read. Read? Get it? Heh, no pun intended. <laughs> Two United States dollar bills, a one and a fiver. Thank you very much. I absolutely love the show and forum. In fact, it has become one of an addiction. Oh, don't blame me. I'm sending you the Sony e-reader for teardown. It's probably not worth fixing. The screen has gone wrong. Yep. And so has the uh, power supply. Well, yeah, that's just some sort of like... Uh, you know, there's some sort of row and column thing gone wrong there. So, eh, that's rather interesting uh, fire mode. So, anyway, um, offhand, uh, I don't know, is it the driver chip or is it just internal connection or something like that? Uh, no, it's got to be a driver because it's fed uh, data and, of course, the data on these uh, just uh, sticks there. And, uh, you know, it doesn't need any power to uh, keep it going. And uh, for these e-ink uh, displays, it never worked correctly from you. There you go, and I had to return the use, not charged or recognized by the computer. So I managed uh, to get it charged and sort of worked, but never got used, and the screen went wrong. Oh, yeah, now the battery was registered only 4 volts. The unit was saying no battery during a hard reset. Ugh, what a crap. I have also found this dollar bill and five dollar bill of 2003 vintage. So they may work in your bill reader. Ah, oh, cool. Thank you very much, Nigel Kingsley Lewis. And that one will go onto my teardown bench. Yes, I do have a teardown bench where uh, some teardown items sit. As you can see, there's not many, at least not big ones anyway. There is no way I am getting that name wrong. Kettle. I'll pronounce that as a silent J. Sorry, I've got it wrong. Hi to all my uh, Norwegian viewers. So let's check this out. It's uh, some electronic component, very slim, in... An envelope, so not very big at all. Oh, look, old fashioned typed. Oh, I love this, folks. Look at this old fashioned typewriter letter. I haven't received one of these in forever since before the internet when I used to get uh, mail, actual mail, with a um, stamped. Oh, sometimes, if they were nice, they'd send me a stamped, self-addressed envelope, and I'd reply, and I'd get my typewriter out. Yes, I actually had a typewriter back in 
oh gee, I don't know, the 80s, and uh, I would type these things out. And, uh, geez, those were the days. Anyway, um, here is a matched of, pair of matched analog repair parts for fluke multimeters that found were tidying up in the old parts bin at your electronics club. Soon hackerspace at the Telemark University uh, College in, I won't even pronounce that, in uh, Norway. We don't have any flukes here, so we thought we'd ship it to you to see. And it, uh, as you seem to have all of them. No, I don't have all flukes. I'm not a collector. Please excuse the caps. This letter is written on our old Teletype 33 TDI from the 70s. Oh, brilliant. It only has uppercase ASCII attached to the punch card reader ribbon, which can be fed into your Teletype to produce a copy of the letter. Oh, oh man. Old school points, definitely. Attached is also a Swedish kroner. A nice modern Norwegian one kroner coin with Viking symbols. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Kettle, I'll pronounce that. This is a Norwegian coin. It's got a hole in it. You've got to save some cost. Brilliant. There you go. 2,000. And there's a one krone. One kroner, is it pronounced? Kroner? I guess it is. And this is just fantastic. Here's the paper tape, which actually contains the text for this letter that they fed into it to print the letter out. Oh, I'll tell you what. That is just gold. That cannot be beaten. You guys get the uh, get the points for the best EV blog mailbag letter ever. Can anybody top that? And here's our fluke parts. Checking out U3 analog IC. I wonder what uh, fluke meter it's at. 1976. 10 months, 76. Absolutely brilliant from the parts department. Ah, oh, this is just gold. This is like all original. I don't even want to open it. Oh, but I have to. I have to. I've got an old, uh, uh, presumably like from a, uh, maybe a, oh no, 70s uh, series. No, 76. No, we, it'd be from like the uh, 80, oh, 80, 20 or something like that. And, uh, oh, there we go. Oh, classic, totally old school dip package. So uh, Kettle didn't say what uh, fluke meter this was from. This is a uh, 1981 vintage, oh, really recent stuff. SC522 SC. Who actually made that offhand? I don't know. I'm sure uh, somebody will be able to uh, tell us. Oh, you know, oh, no, I thought that was, uh, thought that was, is that used? No, it's just, no, look, it's been, it's had some format like that. Ah, uh, yeah, our foam has just fallen to bits. And uh, all we're left with is uh, some crusty pins there. It's still going to be usable, of course, but yeah, no, <laughs> that hasn't uh, survived the test of time, that uh, old conductive foam, that's for sure. Now, I think the oldest uh, fluke I've got in my uh, collection here is that uh, relatively modern Series 2 meter. And, of course, uh, this has still got the uh, old school uh, construction in it with the uh, fluke. ASIC, the surface mount ASIC on the bottom, there you go, it's had its ass blown out of that input uh, protection resistor there, but uh, yeah, just the two fluke uh, SMD ASIC, so if anyone knows um, what this particular uh, fluke part number is, it just says U3 for that analog uh, set, part number, there we go, matched analog set, is a subject of destruction by discharge by static electricity. Yeah, be careful. It's okay, you've got an anti-static mat and I'm not using my wrist strap. Oh no, it's gone! Anyway, if anyone knows what fluke meter that's from, um, it's obviously, you know, uh, 70s, uh, 1970s vintage. Whew, this mailbag's getting a bit long, I think. Lucky last from Christopher Sturtz from Vinton in IA. Idaho? No, Indiana? Uh, Doll, Iowa. Sorry, I don't get much mail or send much mail over the years to Iowa. Sorry to all my viewers in Iowa. Anyway, we've got electronic components, quantity free, and a robotic toy insect. Oh, robotic toy insect. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. And once again, it's going to be a kit, probably. So, forgive me for not being able to assemble this today but it is oh there you go at 6 21 p.m i've got to get home the wife will get most upset 
read first. Oh, I've got to read it first. Reading from the cornfields of Iowa. Yeah, that's probably why I don't get much mail from Iowa. It's just all cornfields. I must confess to having very little hands-on experience when it comes to E beyond most basic of concept, but I still greatly enjoy your videos. Fucking fascinating. Thank you. I've had an interest in electronics for many years. Currently department manager at the local Radio Shack. Awesome. A national retailer that used to be the place for electronics hobbyists. Yes. Um, it wasn't called Radio Shack here in Australia. Of course, it was called uh, Tandy. Tandy Electronics was the name here and yes you could walk into your tandy store and you could buy your you know your uh, uh 4011 cmos chip in a little cardboard packet and you could buy you know two resistors for a dollar in a packet you know and they had all the different packets of all the different values and you'd buy two of them fantastic and it's still an interesting job excellent one of the items we sell is called magic jack a very basic a uh, VoIP adapter, not surprising, doesn't work <laughs> very well. I figured to send a couple of different models that we had for teardown. Or burn open, open fire, whichever you feel more appropriate. Did I mention these don't work very well? Yes, you did. Probably the only good thing is that there is a hack that lets you use the silver magic jack from Google Voice. It works quite well, but unfortunately the program runs it run that runs it costs money. Ah, oh, boo. Finally, I thought you sent along a couple of Hexbug Nanos for Sagan and you to play with. For such a simple design, they're incredibly fun. They work on a hard surface. Is rubber ESD matting a hard surface? It's good enough. Thanks again for your awesome videos. Have a good day. Although, if it, if it requires, thank you very much, Christopher. Um, if it requires like a hard surface, I mean, under here I've got my uh, my pine uh, bench top. Of course, that may not be hard enough. You may need like a laminated uh, uh, bench or something like that. I found when I was doing the battery uh, drop videos for example that the, yeah the rubber just doesn't cut it it, uh, it absorbs a lot of stuff but anyway um these are only little insects oh look at these look at these magic jack there you go i will uh, check those out i have to uh, yeah tear down i can see through there gee that's just ah uh, it's just metalized plastic it's just yeah uh, yeah makes your skin crawl it really does and uh and we've got ourselves a cheap ass uh usb adapter yankee plug of course and uh, a Magic Jack Plus. I will check out those. What I'm really interested in is these. Oh, rather large suppository packaging. Is that the official name of it? The Hexbug. Code inside. Register and play online. Oh, look at them. It's like a like a, a bristlebot um, kind of thing, I guess. i got to cut these suckers open. Is this one here? or This one's already been opened. Here we go. It's like a bristlebug. Oh, these will be fantastic. Sagan will love these. Yeah, yeah. So they just, yeah, look at them. They're so cute. Look at that. Oh, fantastic. That's just brilliant. They've, they've gone to, they've gone to town there. That looks fantastic. Sagan will think this is the best thing ever. Although he's about to go to sleep, so I better get home in a hurry. But uh, there you go. Let's turn it on. Oh, it vibrates. There we go. Oh, it's off. Holy crap. It's off. Holy crap. Hang on. Holy crap! It's off! It's off! It's off! It's off! Will it go off the bench? No! It's stuck! It's stuck! Woohoo! Whoa, and it's off! <laughs> it's doing circles. There's my bare feet, folks. <laughs> it's, look at that! It's doing circle work on the carpet. Brilliant! And of course, there's not, these aren't worth uh, tearing down because there's nothing in them. There's just a little uh, button cell there, on-off switch, and a vibrator motor, and that's it. There's no, I don't believe there's any electronics in these uh, things at all. And it's just, you know, you can see the uh, counterweight on the end of the vibration motor. But I, I just love the little, the uh, form factor of these things. And they go like the clappers. They really do. Check this out. Woohoo! Of course, it tells you on the package, uh, code inside, register and play online. Well, it's not exactly uh, networked or contains, uh, like, you know, serial, you know, like, oh, it talks to your computer on Bluetooth as it's going around. No, there's just a code inside here, which you go to the website and you register and you can learn about real science. Fantastic. Um, like, please keep these instructions. Like, it's so important that you have to put a battery in there and they go to all the trouble about battery safety information. Oh, goodness sake. No. See the switch on the bottom? You want to turn it on? Can you turn it on? 
and it vibrates. There you go. You want to put it down on the ground? Oh, look! Oh, it's gone under the fridge. <laughs>